Hi everybody, back to another lesson on AWS CDK. In a previous lesson, we talked about how we can deploy a basic Lambda function into the AWS ecosystem. And we have not connected from the S3 bucket to our Lambda yet. But today, we are going to do that because if we want to just recap on our pipeline, we have a user who can actually put a file into an S3 bucket and the S3 bucket would send a notification to the Lambda to process the file and load it into an Aurora DB database. So this is our setup and the previous lesson, we talked only about the Lambda, but for this lesson, we are going to connect from the S3 to the Lambda whenever a user you know, plays a file into the bucket. So stay tuned for more. So before we can send notifications from S3 to the Lambda itself, we want to make sure that the Lambda captures the events coming from S3. And to do that, we have to set up some logging. Now, what do I mean by logging? We want to make sure that we can debug them in CloudWatch logs to see whether we are receiving incoming traffic from S3. To do that, set up your import logging, as you can see right here. I have this Lambda already written. So just include logging. Um, get logger, this is a very default setup. Now set logging to debug. That will allow you to see these log messages within CloudWatch. And then within the Lambda handler, event is what you want to capture. So what I do here is every time I do a debug, I include the header of the debug and I will include the event. That will help me to identify what am I capturing on because sometimes when you have a lot of logs coming in, you want to make sure you can differentiate between warning logs, all kinds of logs outside of what you're trying to debug on, right? And so the return is going to be the same. Uh, it's going to be a uh, status code 200, no big deal. And then we are going to do a direct invocation. On paper, it doesn't really seem like anything because if you just go into the Lambda itself, let me just go into it real quick. And I do a Python Lambda function. It should not do anything. It, you can't see the event by itself, but you definitely can log them into CloudWatch. Uh, I mean, you don't have to do it this way. You can actually set up the logger to print it on terminal, but I'm just going to do the same thing here. If I were to do that here, right? You can see it is none. This is important. Um, right now it's gonna be none because we have not set up a mock event coming in. We don't really know yet, but we don't know how the log event looks like. So we are going to you know, let it remain as such. In the Lambda, there are two variables that a function would receive, which you can see here, which the event and the context. Now the event messages are messages that you send to the Lambda itself. Those are parameters that you define as a user. But the context variable is rarely used. It's the runtime environment and it talks about the meta details of what goes on behind the scenes as you as this Lambda is being is running your code basically. So it is not something that we use frequently unless you have special cases. Uh, but I am sure that we are capturing event because this is where our S3 notifications is for. So in this next step, we want to expose our Lambda resource as an object within AWS CDK. Now this is the beauty of AWS CDK where every resource can be represented by an object and you can execute object oriented programming with it where it can be modular, it can be extended, it can be reused at any given point of time, barring the limitations of the resources itself. So without further ado, let us just go through how you can do this efficiently and you can make sure that um, the Lambda can be used by S3 to send notifications to. So to do that, we already have this class. This is the same code as to the previous tutorial but with slight alterations. We are declaring a new public variable. Now this is object-oriented programming in terms of classes. I'm not going to go through object-oriented programming here. This is a very heavy topic, but essentially I can you know, define my Lambda function here, which is a variable that can be accessed by other stacks. Now, this is the type of data that we want to assign to. And this Lambda function comes from the library itself which is the AWS CDK, AWS Lambda, right? So what is it doing? We are referencing our object where we create a resource into this variable here. And this variable 
or object is being exposed as a public read-only uh, variable to the CDK itself. And this allows us to reuse this resource as an object and class every time we reference this code. So now that we get this done, we can move on to getting the S3 bucket ready. So previously we dealt with the Lambda and that's because the S3 bucket needs to know where to send the notifications to. And right now we're gonna deal with the notifications themselves. To do that, we need to install the AWS S3 notifications right here. Now do your NPM thing and remember to update all the rest of the um, AWS CDK packages because if any of them are not aligned, you can't deploy. Next up, we want to create an interface. Now this interface is a lot to do with um, object-oriented programming. I'm not going to deal with it because this is a very heavy topic, a little bit out of, out of scope. But essentially, this interface allows us to extend the class in terms of inputs. And you can see here, we make sure that we are going to receive the AWS resource from this object right here as Lambda function. And this Lambda function, you can see that this is very familiar comes from the basic Lambda stack that we originally um, declared or instantiated, right? And so um, this is what it comes down to. We want to make sure that the class can access this variable. And to do that, within the constructor itself, assign the interface to props right here, right? So this Lambda is going to be stored within this variable here. And this variable is going to be extended into this props variable right here. This becomes an object and within the object itself, you can reference the Lambda function here as pertains to this naming convention, right? So this is a little bit of referencing, uh, but it's not too complicated. Um, just be used to this kind of syntax. Next up, you can see that we, I have already this code. This code is the same code um, as to our previous tutorial. No difference there. But we have a new line right here. And this new line here is to add event notification. Now, what kind of notifications can be done is within this S3 event type. Uh, an object created is one of them. Now, this object created is a very generic uh, object created you know, variable. As you can see in this you know, tooltip on put, post, copy, whenever you create a, an object. Um, but you can fine tune this. Like you can say um, object created put, and then it only reacts or responds when it is a put request. You know you can make sure that you can fine tune your system. Or if you want the bucket to send notifications when things are deleted, you can say S3 event type object removed. So you can tune it to your business use case. But for our use case, we don't really care. We just want object created because it just works. Last but not least, we want to assign the notifications, and we want to assign the notifications to the resource right, that we care about, which is the Lambda. So that's why within this um, block of code here, this is the library itself. Uh, Lambda destination is because we're using Lambdas. Now it can be SNS, SQS, but because we're using Lambda, it's gonna be Lambda destination. And of course we assign the actual resource to it using the props variable. This is an instance by itself. So you include the new and you will realize that S3 will be able to connect to this Lambda function because of this line of code, all right? Now, you realize something very important missing, which is permissions. Usually when you deal with uh, Terraform, serverless or whatever, you do need to define your IAM rules or permissions. But for CDK, it's beautiful because if you don't define it explicitly, internally, AWS CDK is going to help you to, to build those permissions for you during deployment and you will see that when we deploy later. So we have prepared our Lambda stack. We have prepared our S3 stack. It is time to marry them within the binary folder right here. And this is how we can do it. I have rearranged some of this um, code right here. Initially, um, S3 was built first before Lambda, but because I'm just following some um, programming conventions, first, this is nothing new. This is the same code as what we did in the previous tutorial we are just creating a Lambda, basic Lambda stack instance through this class view, right? This instance or object right now is going to be passed into this stack right here. 
So I rearrange this because we want to declare this first before we can you know, assign it to the S3 bucket on the second. And you can see this Lambda function here follows the convention of your interface, right? And because this is a strongly typed language, uh, if you remove this at this point, it will actually generate an error. Why? Because it's expecting um, a Lambda function. Okay, so TypeScript protects you from making mistakes. And of course, you can do um, even some testing, uh, code testing itself to make sure that nothing goes wrong. But this is the beauty of, of TypeScript. Now we are going to run it and you're going to see how it actually works out. So to run, go back to your terminal, do a npm run build double ampersand cdk synth, right? So this will build the project for you and it will generate the CloudFormation template. So just take a while, it doesn't really take too long and then you should be able to see something interesting. Notice that you have two stacks, which do you build first? It's a million dollar question and the answer is AEWS CDK doesn't care. If you're gonna build the S3 stack first, it's, it knows it needs the Lambda stack first. So it's smart enough to build the Lambda stack before it builds the S3 stack. And what if you build the Lambda stack first? It doesn't matter, you just have to build it the second time. So I'm just gonna build once and for all. I'm gonna build the S3 stack first because it needs the Lambda function and you will see that it deploys the Lambda first before it deploys the S3. So let me just do that real quick. So I'm gonna do a CDK deploy. I'm not gonna do the basic Lambda stack, but I'm gonna do the S3 stack. So let's go for it. And you can see at this stage, Lambda is being built first because it's asking me for roles and permissions for the Lambda. Sure, let's build that. So now you can see that CDK is smart enough to build the S3 stack next and it's gonna assign the IAM roles to make sure that they can send um, the S3 notifications to. And let me just say yes, of course. Now that it's done, you can see that I have my S3 bucket here. Next up, within the functions itself, you can see that the AWS CDK created two lambdas. Now this lambda is to handle the S3 bucket notifications. I'm not gonna deal with that because this is generated by CDK itself. But this is the lambda that we use to you know, code. And so that's where um, if you open it up, you can see that the code itself is right here. Not too much um, fancy stuff, it's just the same deal. Now, how then can we test if our S3 bucket works with the Lambda? Let us just find a file and I have identified a file that I want to put in. So I've dragged and dropped this file e0.csv into the bucket and we are going to upload this immediately. Okay, successful upload. Now we are going to check the Lambda itself to see if the notification works. I'm going to go here and I'm going to the monitor. And under the monitor, we can see from CloudWatch if there is any invocation. Just look for it. Doesn't really look like we have an invocation yet. Let me just refresh. We should be able to see something, hopefully. Um, let me just go into the CloudWatch itself. Sometimes this is slow. Let me go into the CloudWatch itself. And then we have a log group. I've tested this um, before this uh, entire video shoot but let me just do go for it. And you can see um, it is working right right here. This is the payload, this is the event. As you can see, event is following this um, stuff right here, right? This is the event itself, it's triggered and it outputs the debug right here. So you can successfully see that our stack is working. Now let's go into a pro tip that I'm gonna throw it in. You know, when you want to start building up uh, your stack, you don't really want to you know, keep testing by putting in a lot of files here. It, it becomes very cumbersome and it's very, very painful. So what I do normally is to take this and I'm going to make it a JSON object because at this point, this payload right here, they're all in single quotes. JSON requires double quotes as you know, their wrapper. And so I'm gonna use it here and you know, you'll know why. If I do this and I copy and I paste it as a test case right here, let's say this is uh, S3 notification. 
and I paste it right here uh, it refused to recognize this string as an app, uh, a JSON object okay but there is a pro tip you can use go into your inspect right go into your console now what do I do here I can do a console.log and then I can do a JSON dot um, stringify and I paste the the whole payload into this um, stringify function and if I do that I have my string as a JSON formatted string instead I can copy this and I can paste it right back into this um, yeah, test event and you can see that it will work okay you can see that suddenly my JSON is color coded and the format will be okay let me just is it going to do, do that yeah it's gonna work off the cuff and if I save changes it will just work and then if I do a test right now and it should show us the status code and it also shows us the debug string so this is beautiful because you don't really want again the cumbersome act of putting files all the time to test your code this is very very good for unit testing if you ever come to it right if you do just copy this and put it direct it will never work and i can show you right here it will never ever work and if i save it will block me okay so this is my pro tip for you um of course you can always reuse this code here sorry this string here block of string here and put it into a file and when you put it into a file you can reuse the same file to mock or simulate the incoming s3 event and put it as your test case for your unit testing and so this is how you can use this um, notification uh, uh, to your advantage we have connected the s3 bucket to the lambda itself and we have made sure the the pipeline works within the cloudwatch logs it tells us that it works and for the next video we are going to do a little bit on testing um, but stay tuned for more my name is jonathan and i will see you guys next time for another video